So now I want to go on the club with that. نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل الله ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وشر لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشر أن محمدا عبده رسوله يا الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان استك حديث كتاب الله تعالى واحسن حديث حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر امور محدثاتها وكل محدثات بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار الحمد لله all praise is due to Allah we praise him and we extol him and we seek refuge in Allah from evil within ourselves 
and the evil results of our wrong actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomsoever Allah allows to be left in misguidance, none can guide that person. Verily, the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the finest guidance is the guidance of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the most evil of affairs are the newly invented ones. And verily, every newly invented matter is a bidah, an evil going astray. And every bidah leads to the hellfire. We are Billah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, that Allah Azza wa Jal brought us here today safe and sound. Today, inshallah, we would like to discuss a little bit about this issue of mental health. This need for us to discuss this has become long overdue, my dear brothers and sisters. But firstly, my condolence goes out to the, the families, the loss of those families of the German flight recently, which crashed over the French Alps. My condolence and sincere condolence goes out to them. And subhanAllah, as we're preparing for this day of Yom al Jum'ah and what to discuss, this incident happened. And then when this incident happened, they tried to find out the reason why the incident happened. And subhanAllah, la hawla wa la quwwata la billah, it found out that this co-pilot was suffering from mental illness. He was salim in his badin, his body was healthy. But his mind was suffering from a slight stress a few years back. And Qadr Allah, it triggered and it caused him to take the lives of those over 149 people. Took his life and the life of the pilot and the lives of those who were entrusted under his care. La hawlana wa la quwata illa billah. But my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the problem is that a lot of Muslims nowadays are suffering from severe mental illness and it's become something of taboo where a lot of Muslims, they choose not to talk about this issue. We choose to alienate those Muslim brothers and sisters who might be suffering, who are suffering from some form of alienation or mental illness or depression or some type of manic, or some type of schizophrenia. This is something that is arising amongst our ummah. It's arising worldwide, especially since the advent of the internet. It's been arising much more frequently that a lot of people, they take this as some, a type of a scapegoat. This is a type of a scapegoat where they want to just go and sit in front of the internet or they sit in front of the TV, but more so, they have the access to the internet, so they tend to glue themselves and they want to escape from reality, from the problems in the internet. This, my dear brothers and sisters, in medical terms is called self-medicating. That a lot of Muslims nowadays, non Muslims and non-Muslims, have become into the habit of self-medicating themselves. They want to escape from the reality that they're facing these social illnesses. So they would rather self-medicate than seek the appropriate help for the issue. So we have to try and take the necessary steps, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, to eradicate this social illness. And a lot of Muslims have now been plagued by the illnesses that have plagued the non-Muslims. Namely, the issue of mental health and depression. But there is now a very small, minute number of believers who have been able to treat themselves and have been able to cope with their illness. Mental health is something that is not taboo, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. It so happens that a lot of people are suffering and the majority of those people who are suffering, they're suffering silently. And a lot of people in society, they don't know how to deal with this. Rather than try and help that person, they'd rather say that that person has issues. They'd rather than help the person, they would stigmatize that individual by saying that he or she 
has issues. What issues they are, Allah knows best. But when the person starts to show signs that they have issues, that a person, other people will be able to recognize that they have issues, rather than trying to help that person, they'd rather stigmatize the person by saying that he or she has issues on one extreme. And on the other extreme, you will have other people will say that, thank God that this person does have issues. Because if he was a normal person, then we couldn't deal with him. We couldn't deal with that person if he or she was normal. So now it's become the norm to accept people who have issues. We stigmatize individuals. We stigmatize each other by labeling each other with some kind of an issue. We say that this person is acceptable because he or she has some sort of a mental health issue. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this isn't something that is abnormal. This is a growing concern in our society that a lot of people have now been plagued with some sort of a mental health issue. But Allah Azza wa Jal did not leave the believers to just self-medicate themselves. But the majority of the problem lies at the hands of the Imams and the so-called shiuch, when they are brought, these individuals, with those mental health issues, rather than trying to help that person, the person might be crying out, given a distress call or a distress signal by coming to the imam, which is good, which is very good, because a lot of individuals would rather try and self-medicate themselves by just going on the YouTube, watching videos all night long, because they can't sleep. They can't sleep. So they'd rather sit and listen to music, or watch all kind of videos, or who knows what, Allah knows what, rather than going and trying to seek the legal sources of remedy for their problem. Rather than coming to the masjid and asking the imam or the sheikh for a remedy for their problem. The majority of the time, you'll have a brother or a sister, they would come to the masjid and they would ask the sheikh or the imam or a religious person, brother, I have a problem. I cannot sleep. This is one of the signs, my dear brothers and sisters. When you have a brother or sister come to you say that they cannot sleep, that's a sign that they are starting to suffer from some type of illness. An illness is starting to set into that individual. So when we hear that, we don't just tell the brother, make dua, inshallah, Allah will make it easy. Try and find some other way to solve your problem. That is a distress call, my dear brothers and sisters. So we should try and find the legal, the person who is rightly guided, the upright imam or sheikh who can give that person the right guidance. Because the problem is, the majority of the time, when that person who is giving out that distress call or raving that red flag, saying that they need help, they would just normally suggest that they need Quran read on them. This, was, this is the natural response of the majority of the Muslims. When they go to the mosque or they go to a sheikh, they ask a sheikh to recite Quran on them or to make some taweez. Make some taweez that they can wear around their neck, a locket or some ayats of Quran or something that they can wear or they can recite on the water and they can drink. Rather than teach the person, rather than teach the person the way to help themselves or to remedy themselves, majority of the time they want to give them just a quick fix. This is not a good habit. We have to remind ourselves and remind the Imams or the Shiuch that you should not teach the people to become dependent upon other people. We should try and steer the people in the direction of being dependent on Allah Azza wa Jal. This should be the norm. When you have a person who is not feeling well, we should try and steer them to an imam or a sheikh who can teach them the words of remembrance that can help them to remedy themselves. And we recite the Quran. The Quran is, as Allah said, shifa li nas. The Quran is a cure for the people. It's a cure. Allah Azza wa Jal, and he coins the Quran as Hudan lil that the Quran 
is a guidance for those who believe. When we look at the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, there's many adua, many yani adkar, ad'iya, many duas, supplication, authentic supplications that you can find in the Quran and in the Sunnah of how for us how we can remedy ourselves. There's just one supplication I would like to, to read to you all today on the authority of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. He collected this in his Musnad on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radhiyallahu anhu that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said ما أصاب أحدا قطة حم ولا حزن. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that there isn't anyone who is suffering. قط. He said there isn't anyone, anyone, any person at all who is suffering from حزن, يعني and sadness and grief. فقال and he recites this dua. اللهم إني أبدوك ابن أماتك Nasyatin biyadika maadin Fiya hukmaka adlan Fiya qadauka As'aluka bi kuli ism huwa lak Sameta bihi nafsak O anzanta hima Fi kitabika O alamta ahadan min qalqika O asafarta bihi fil ilm al-ghaib indaka Antaj ala Qur'an al-Azim Rabbi al-Qalbi Wa nuru sadri Wa jal hazni Wa dhahab al-hamni The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said That Whoever recites this dua, there isn't any person who recites this dua and supplicates and says, Oh Allah, Allahumma, I am your servant, son of your female servant. My forelock is in your hand. Your decision concerning me shall certainly come to pass. Fear is your judgment about me. I invoke you by every name that you have and that you call yourself. By and sent down in your book and taught any of your creatures or kept with you in the knowledge of the unseen that is with you that you make the glorious Quran the spring of my heart the light of my chest the relief of my grief and the remover of my concerns then the Prophet ﷺ said Allah surely Allah will remove the person's grief and change that grief and that sadness with delight. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the narrator of this hadith, he said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, should we learn these words? Should we learn these words? The Prophet said, Bala, of course you should learn this. The Prophet Sallallahu when Abdullah ibn Mas'ud asked him, should we learn these words? The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi said, Bala, of course you should learn these words. Bal yanbaghi ala kulli man sama'aha an yata'allamaha. That it is a must for anyone who hears these words that they should learn them. So, Allah Azza wa Jal, He's taught us in the Quran at the first instance of any type of anxiety or stress that we should turn to Allah Azza wa Jal. We should return back to Allah Azza wa Jal. And the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He taught us also in the Sunnah, the authentic Sunnah, that in the times of stress, Fitna, that we should pray to Raka'ah. If we pray to Raka'ah, the Prophet ﷺ said, This is as if you're making hijrah to me. Allah says in the Quran that if we have any problem, what should we say? Inna lillahi wa inna li we should not complain. What Allah said, that, the, that the Allah will send down on that person who says, Inna lillahi wa inna li From Allah we come and to Allah is our return. Allah will send down to them the salawat from Allah Azza wa Jal and the rahmah and the mercy from Allah Azza wa Jal at the first instance of the anxiety or stress because that's life. Such is life. That as we live our life, we'll have some things which, cause, which are called stressors in our life.
But how do we deal with those things? Do we allow it to build up within ourselves to the point like that person who caused the plane, the anxiety and stress to build up, that he would take it out on the other innocent people in the plane and cause it to crash? And it's a funny thing that they just said that that person, he was suffering from stress and anxiety. They did not talk about his religion. They didn't mention anything about his religion. We have no idea what his religion is. We have no idea where he comes from, whether he's from, from Mars. We don't know where he's from. We don't know his religion. Only thing we know is that he was suffering from stress, anxiety. He was planning to get married and the engagement was turned off and it was called off and he started to become stressed out. Alhamdulillah wasn't a Muslim. Alhamdulillah, they didn't blame it on Muslims. But that is not our discussion today, my dear brothers and sisters. Allah Azza wa Jal is a raqib Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who is always watching over us. We have to be in a state of self-examination. We have to always be looking within ourselves to find out if we are starting to suffer from any kind of anxiety or stress. And we have to look within ourselves to see if we are trying to self-medicate ourselves. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna Allah kan alaykum raqiba. This is one of the blessed names of Allah Azza wa Jal. That Allah Azza wa Jal is a raqib. Allah is always watching over us. He's keeping a guard over us. So we as Muslimin, we have to start to look within ourselves retrospectively and look and see if we have any triggers that are causing us to self-medicate ourselves. We should not start to do that. If we feel that we are going through some kind of a period of stress, and we're sincere, then Allah Azza wa Jal, He will guide us to the cure. He will guide us to the cure. This life is filled with pitfalls and stressors, but we cannot allow the stressors and pitfalls of life to get us down. And we should not just bring a Muslim brother or sister to the Imam or the Sheikh and say, oh, read Quran on this brother. He's suffering from stress. Because the first thing that a Muslim does, they say this person, he might have jinn. He might be possessed. So they bring to the sheikh, and the sheikh, he reads Quran, and he says, and he, or he might read something underwater and say, drink this, inshallah, and call me in the morning. This is not how it works. As the old saying goes, you can give a man a fish, and he will eat for today. But if you teach a man how to fish, then he will eat and feed his family for a lifetime. Much more palatable. It makes better sense that we would get into the habit of teaching each other, teaching each other how to help ourselves. When we go to the ship, we have to try and guide each other to the right imam, the right sheikh, who would take the time out, one day, two days, three days, one week, two months, and have a class teaching the adhkar, the adhiya, the du'as, the authentic du'as, the name. We could start by learning the asma wa sifat of Allah Azza wa Jal. A good place to start is by learning the blessed names and holy attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. When we start to learn these things, what is the meaning of Allah, the name of Allah? Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Ar-Raqib. We're talking about Ar-Raqib today. Allah is Ar-Raqib. He is ever vigilant and watchful over his servants and his ibad. Allah Al-Latif, is another one of the blessed names and attributes of Allah. The law does not want to cause any harm. But sometimes Allah might put his servant through some type of hardship and difficulty. So Allah will cause us to go through certain things which are difficult for us because after that, Allah has in store for us something, much, something which is much, much more great and fantastic. But we don't understand that. So Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed names and attributes as the Prophet Sallallahu Allah, Lahu al wa Tis'in Ism. Allah has over 99 names. Yani, illa wa illa mia. Man ahsaha dakhl al jannah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah has over 99 names, less 100. And whoever actualizes them, whoever understands them fully, will enter into jannah. So we have to make this, inshallah, be our starting point. If we want to get a nicer understanding of ourselves, 
Because a human being is a very complex creature. If we want to start to understand ourselves, then let the starting point be for us to try and understand the asma wa sifa of Allah Azza wa Jal. Let us start to try and study the blessed names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then, bi'idhnillah ta'ala, we'll understand Allah Azza wa Jal. We'll begin to start to understand Allah and the beauty in Allah and the hikmah of Allah, bi'idhnillah ta'ala. So may Allah bless all of us and may Allah remove all of our anxiety and stress and guide us to the blessed names and attributes of Allah. Allah bi-dhikrillah ta'unul qaloob, Allah said, isn't it in the remembrance of Allah where hearts find satisfaction? So may Allah guide all of us, may Allah bless all of our hearts and guide us to learning and studying the blessed names and attributes of Allah. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا عاتنا في الدنيا حسن وفرح حسن وخير دابنا وقيم صلاة